Hi, it's Dwyer. It is August 8th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. On this site, which I'm going to revive, we're going to talk about more, obs more obscure parts of betting and uh, with a focus on long-term predictions. We're going to be calibrating and recalibrating the teams we like in the futures market here on sports um, as well as to address some of the questions people have let's talk about it let's talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers let's talk about a situation major situation involving the San Francisco 49ers but remember the opinion you should follow should be your own just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online now many of us have fantasy drafts coming up and we have to make hard decisions on who exactly is the starting quarterback of what team and how do they rate. Now there's a lot of uh, illusion going on with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Many people believe that Justin Fields, right, a former lottery pick, a guy who, you know, is the better athlete, is the younger athlete, is a great runner from the pocket, Many feel that he is better than Russell Wilson, right? The question is, given that Tomlin hasn't been below 500 for years, right? That the Steelers uh, seem to be a team that's always in contention. The question is, who's the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers? Who's going to win out? Understand, I'm making this video August 8th. Right? We're a long way from the end of the preseason. So who do I feel is going to win out and be the starter? And folks, to me, it's not close. I believe Russell Wilson is the starter. Uh, don't be fooled by Justin Fields' athleticism, the fact that he was picked in the top five in an NFL draft. You don't leave Chicago. And keep in mind, Chicago has a lot of wide receivers this year. The Bears don't let you leave and then draft someone in your position in the first round of the NFL draft, which is what the Bears did this year, right? If you don't have holes in reading defenses, understand Justin Fields does a lot of things well. He's a great athlete, but there's some dynamic that regular fans aren't picking up that I believe the people who break down films are. Greg Cosell has been critical of Justin Fields on an almost ongoing basis. I believe when you look on film, you're going to see people are open who Justin Fields is not seeing. Russell Wilson, we get the criticism. Right? Let's summarize it here. It's that he's too made for TV that he comes across as inauthentic, that the players in the locker room sense the lack of authenticity, that Russell is looking to portray a certain image in front of the camera, that Russell was upset. He had a defensive head coach, Pete Carroll, and he was upset that he wasn't given the freedom of other quarterbacks and that he was too passive-aggressive and trying to get Pete ousted in Seattle. Right? You understand, too, the red flags here. He couldn't get along with the defensive coach in Pete Carroll. He now has another defensive coach in Mike Tomlin. You understand that the division has two great secondaries. The Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens, right? So he's in a tough division. Uh, the Cleveland Browns also have uh, an excellent pass rush. Uh, Miles Garrett. Um, it's a it's a tough division, right? But I would argue that Russell Wilson was well on his way to the Hall of Fame. Just look at the number of Pro Bowl appearances. I once saw a quarterback challenge where Russell Wilson hit the targets and showed you 
incredible accuracy, uh, the kind of skills that should have gotten him drafted earlier, but for, um, you know, his lack of size. The NFL was a little bit different 10 years ago. Now, a Caleb is able to be picked first in the NFL draft. Um, you know, a Tua is picked in the top five, even though these guys are what we used to view as undersized. Right, Russell um, still works out great. Right, can hit targets, is accurate, uh, has the experience that Justin Fields doesn't have. Right, let's remember, Russell is one yard away from winning his second Super Bowl when he throws a pick. Right, when the Seahawks decided not to give the ball to Marshawn Lynch. Right, Russell already has beaten Peyton Manning in a Super Bowl. So I believe Russell is the better, more experienced quarterback. I think the situation with Sean Payton, who has an excellent quarterback, I'm a Bo Nix fan, right? But I believe the situation with Sean Payton was a little bit complicated by the fact that Payton wanted to rebuild the team and Russell was making a lot of money, right? I think, too, um, how do you put it? Uh, Payton had a natural leader a guy who resonated in the locker room and Drew Brees when he was with the Saints as their head coach. And I think Peyton understood that Russell, um, in addition to having the big salary that was handicapping the Broncos' ability to remake the team, but I think Peyton also understood that Russell really uh, wasn't the guy's guy. Let's just talk as men here. He just wasn't the guy's guy that Drew Brees was. He wasn't an inspirational type guy, and it's worse than that. There's an opportunity cost, quite frankly, and having a guy who, you know, wants to be seen as a leader, who wants that title, who's going to compete with others for, you know, leadership recognition on the team, who isn't a natural leader, right? Who, quite frankly, if you listen to some of the people who played with him, the Legion of um, Boom, back in the Seattle days, right? Richard Sherman and some others, uh, you get the feeling that their relationship with him is very different than, let's say, the relationship of, um, you know, Travis Kelsey and others with Pat Mahomes, right? Russell just doesn't come across that way. But I believe Pittsburgh is a blue-collar town. I believe Mike Tomlin is a high-profile coach, right? I believe that the Pittsburgh fan base, um, you know, is going to give Russell more leeway because he's viewed differently now, right? The view on Russell is that he flamed out with the Denver Broncos, that this really is his last chance to be a starter. Right, I believe he's going to be viewed a lot more sympathetically. I believe the Steeler locker room is different than the more all-American, we'll call it, um, ideally. You know, uh, what they're striving for in Denver. Right, I think with the Steelers, it's more of a come-as-you-are type atmosphere where guys can show up with flaws, uh, with shortcomings, and people will overlook them. Right? Pittsburgh is just a different culture right now than the Denver Broncos. So, I think Russell Wilson ultimately beats out Justin Fields. That's how I'm going to be playing it in uh, a fantasy pool uh, later this month. Let's talk about the best team in the league. And no, I'm not talking about the Kansas City Chiefs. The best team in the league right now, and they could easily mess this up, because of their ongoing situation are the San Francisco 49ers. Folks, they haven't won a Super Bowl recently, right? The pressure out here is constant because San Franciscans were spoiled by the 1980s and early 90s, right? You know, if I ask you who is the most important figure from the 49ers during that era, uh, you have great arguments that could be made for more than one person. 
right? There's Bill Walsh, who created the West Coast offense. There's Joe Montana, right? I'm not going to blink when I say this. He's the best quarterback I've seen. There's also the guy who NFL Network named as the best football player in history. <laughs> I disagree with that, but Jerry Rice certainly is on the very short list. So understand, you know, and th that's not to ignore the other Hall of Famers, right? People like Ronnie Lott who played for the team. So that standard is really impossible to meet. Right? Understand, too, the Niners, they've been to multiple Super Bowls, and they've had different quarterbacks. Jimmy Garoppolo was with them in a Super Bowl. By the way, they had a 10-point lead on Kansas City in that Super Bowl in the second half. Right? Understand, Brock Purdy left the field for the last time last season with a three-point lead on the Kansas City Chiefs. Right, the Niners, people don't appreciate Shanahan enough. They've been to multiple Super Bowls with really a changing cast. Right, they didn't have Chris McCaffrey when they went to the Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo. Right, so right now, the Niners have a situation that's being underreported. We get the fact that this offseason, the salary range changed. For wide receivers right we get the fact that Justin Jefferson got a mint didn't he from the Vikings right many of these receivers are saying hey man pay me the I'm now underpaid given the new salary range here we get that right now you have teams where wide receivers are among the highest paid players on the team. Well, you have Brandon Ayuk, and folks, he's one of the best wide receivers in the league. Right? Ayuk is extremely well positioned because, and let's say this again in public, no one seems to believe me. The Niners have really a franchise quarterback. Folks, he's a franchise quarterback who's one of the best quarterbacks they've had since I've been following the team. And I came to the Bay Area in 1982. Right? On a team that had not just the guys you know, right? Montana, Hall of Famer. Steve Young, Hall of Famer. Right? They've even had Jeff Garcia, who people in the Bay Area know. Right? Who, quite frankly, was a very good quarterback. Right? The Niners have had some quarterbacks, folks. And I'm just telling you, believe it or not, Brock Purdy belongs in the conversation. Right? I had a bet. And Brock Purdy was so lightly regarded that you got it at better than 20 to 1 odds. And I was in the running. It was Brock Purdy to win NFL MVP. And I know people don't remember this, but folks, as late as Christmas Day, Brock Purdy was on the verge of winning NFL MVP. They were playing the Baltimore Ravens. And of course, while Brock threw several picks that day, and not all of them were his fault. Right? Lamar Jackson had a spectacular day. Lamar Jackson ended up winning NFL MVP. Had Brock Purdy just thrown for the customary three touchdowns and, you know, no more than one pick. Had Brock Purdy in a game in San Francisco, really Santa Clara, let's just say on San Francisco's home field. Had Brock Purdy simply won that game, he would have locked up MVP because understand, he wouldn't have had to have played the next week. He was that close to NFL MVP. Well, understand, no team has the combination. And I mean this. This is how dominant the Niners are. No team has the combination of a running back group that's as good as the Niners. 
coupled with the wide receiver group that's as good as the Niners have right now. Right, folks? The Niners have Christian McCaffrey. Please don't talk to me about Pacheco being competitive with the Chiefs. The Niner wide receivers dwarf, and I mean this, dwarf Kansas City's wide receivers. Right, folks? The Niners, quite frankly, have, in my opinion, the most talent right now in the National Football League. What could mess that up? How about wide receiver Brandon Ayuk, who is great? Wanting to get paid really what he's worth right now. Right? If you're going to pay Brandon Ayuk what he's worth, the number has to be around $30 million a year. I know, for old-timers, that makes no sense. Right? You're thinking, what? you got to be kidding. Wide receivers used to be paid a lot less. Right? People like Amari Cooper are upset with their salaries, which at one point were great salaries. Right? Understand a lot of wide receivers are upset. But this one is threatening the dynasty. Right? With Brandon Ayuk, and you're not going to get commensurate value for him if you trade him. With Brandon Ayuk, the Niners have an excellent ensemble. That's very hard to stop. Right? Understand, too, Ayuk is among the leaders in the league in yards per catch. He's the deep threat. He's the home run on that Niner offense. You come up to the line to stop Christian McCaffrey, to stop Debo Samuel, suddenly you have a surgeon at quarterback who can throw over the defense to an excellent wide receiver who's in his prime. So Ayuk, I'm hoping, is bluffing. It makes all the difference in the world. With Ayuk, I don't care who the team is. Please, don't, don't tell me about the Eagles suddenly getting it together after the collapse last season. Right? We know the situation with the Cowboys is so iffy. And I do believe in the Cowboys. But you understand C.D. Lamb is holding out. You understand Mike McCarthy doesn't have a new contract. You understand Dak Prescott doesn't have a new contract. <laughs> right? That Cowboys situation is a little bit iffy. I know everyone is uh, gloating about the Lions. You know I'm a gambler. I completely appreciate their head coach being high risk, going for it on fourth downs. Right? You and I understand that can blow up. You and I also understand that a quarterback whisperer, McVay, had Goff on his juggernaut team, the Los Angeles Rams. Right? And they decided to have him move on. Right? You understand that Goff, there are different camps on him. You also understand that the defense last year was so challenged, they had a lead on the Niners. They were this close to a Super Bowl. And then they collapsed. Right? So, let me just say, um, if the Niners sign Brandon Ayuk, or if Ayuk says, look, I'm going to wake up here and realize that I'm on a team that's on a run and that I want to be here for at least the next couple years to see where this run takes us. If Ayuk understands that right now a defensive coordinator has to worry about Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, and that opens things up for Ayuk. If Ayuk understands that the Steelers have a defensive head coach and that the Niners have one of the premier offensive minds in the National Football League, when you're thinking about, you know, Shanahan, he's really in the same class with uh, McVay, who's won a Super Bowl, right? With an Andy Reid, who's won a few Super Bowls, 
right folks they're very few hardcore offensive minds in the sport right I'll throw in the Dolphin head coach there aren't that many you're an offensive player you understand this is a team game and your numbers are in fact a function of how well the rest of the offense can take attention away from you defensively. If I'm Ayuk, I would work with the Niners here. So the Niners, believe it or not, engineered a trade of Ayuk to the Patriots. Talk about going from the penthouse to the outhouse. Folks, the Patriots have, what, a new head coach? Uh, who knows who the quarterback of the Patriots is going to be? Um, you know, name your poison. Aaron Rodgers is back. People are hyped up on the Jets. Of course, the Dolphins were in the playoffs last year. Tua is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Uh, of course, Josh Allen and the Bills made the playoffs. They're an excellent team. Um, folks, going to the Patriots is going to a team that's going to be below 500 this year. Again. Right, so Ayuk wisely at the last moment said, no, I don't want the lucrative deal that the Patriots are offering. I'm going to turn this deal down. So let me tell you how it's playing out. Supposedly the Steelers are still interested in Brandon Ayuk. I'm hoping this is a game of passive aggression. I'm hoping Ayuk is just playing this out with the firm intention at the last minute of turning to the team and saying, look, you see what the Steelers were offering me. You see what the Patriots were offering me. Just give me a deal in that range and I'll be here. Right? I'm hoping Ayuk is that player who understands that these championship opportunities don't come around that often. That he is the deep threat on a juggernaut team that just played in the Super Bowl and that's still hungry. Let me make another point too. And I know this will sound ridiculous. Ayuk's in one of the wealthiest parts of the United States. Folks, it's hard to even describe the money in Silicon Valley. What I want you to do is to just think about the fact that Google is out here. Again, Northern California. That Meta is out here. Right? In terms of crypto, which is taking off, just figure out that Andreessen Horowitz is out here. Pantera Capital is out here. You're not going to find a better, more loyal NFL community than the fan base here of the San Francisco 49ers. Right, folks, you know what they call you when you move from San Francisco and you're a San Francisco 49er fan and you go down to L.A. and they have a great stadium. Let's say you move to L.A. for whatever reason. And L.A. has a great stadium, all this money, um, you know, celebrities at games and stuff like that. You know what they call you after 10 years of you living in L.A. after having been a San Francisco 49er fan? They call you a San Francisco 49er fan. I mean, that's who this fan base is. So I hope as Brandon Ayuk is seeing people like Jerry Rice hanging out at practice, right? I, I hope as he <laughs> understands that there's statues at the new stadium of Joe Montana and other Niners, right? I'm hoping the guy understands what he has right now. I'm hoping this is a big bluff. If Brandon Ayuk stays with the Niners, folks, the Niners are the team to beat, not in the NFC, but period, right? Let me just say, obviously you're going to play it your way, right? You might want to take the Niners simply to win the NFC, 
have some hedge opportunities. Maybe you believe in the Lions. Maybe you believe in the Green Bay Packers, right? I'm just telling you some dicey teams out there with a lot of upside, right? The Packers have youth on their side. Jordan Love looks like he is a possibly great quarterback, right? But if Ayuk leaves, just understand that that disruption is going to drop the Niners down a few pegs, right? Maybe there's some young hotshot on the Niners who can step in for Brandon Ayuk, but you and I know a lot of teams in this league, and I mean a lot of teams in this league, are looking for great wide receivers, right? Including, by the way, the Kansas City Chiefs. So watch this Ayuk situation carefully. The Patriots are out of the running. It's August 8th already. Right? Something has to happen. Let's hope the team and the player find a way to get IU paid at least this season. Uh, postpone the idea of IU thinking of leaving. Right? Ayuk was talking about the Ravens the other day. Folks, I'm just telling you, and I know this is going to be question great. Question everything I say, right? For a wide receiver, you're better off having Brock Purdy as your quarterback than you are Lamar Jackson, right? Don't get me wrong. Jackson is clearly a Hall of Famer. He's a two-time MVP. He has one of the highest winning percentages in the National Football League. But in terms of hitting receivers other than the tight end, my money would be on Brock Purdy. Right? Also, understand, in that NFC West, the Niners have a bigger lead on everyone than any team has on the other teams in the AFC North. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.